Hello everyone, welcome to Tactica Imperialis and to today's video. Today is going to be a my thoughts on, which is late admittedly, because well, my schedule works that way. This is going to be my thoughts on the big FAQ number two for 2018, the autumn 2018 edition. So for those of you who are new to 40k or maybe haven't been around all that long, uh, now we are in a position with 8th edition where every uh, six months or so, twice a year, Games Workshop publishes a big set of rules changes. These aren't points changes, they're done in the chapter approved at the end of the year, that will be I think in December, but these FAQs are designed to rebalance the game and bring things into line. They're reactive, they're based on community feedback, so they're pretty much designed with the player base in mind. And in the big FAQ number one, we saw some interesting beta rules that were tested over the previous six months, and they have now been enshrined into law or have been rechanged again. We'll get to those as we go through the video. Before we start with this, as I said with the previous set of FAQs, I I wanted to give a quick overview before I dive in because this video can go quite long. I like the intention behind the changes again, and I think that's been sort of a running theme with GW changing things. When they change things, they do them with the right intentions, and I always think that they do that. But I do sometimes question the execution. I'll point out the individual rules as we go along as to where I think their execution has either gone well or has not gone so well. But good intentions, interesting execution is how I generally sum these FAQs up, and I don't think that's changed this time. But enough spiel, let's dive right in, shall we, and have a look at what we've got changed for this time round. Let's go. So, first off, the Battle Brothers change, aka the soup nerf, has been enshrined into the rules. That is now the final form, and it is staying as it was. So, all units in detachment in your Battle Forged Army must have at least one faction keyword in common. This keyword cannot be Chaos, Imperium, Eldari, Yinari, or Tyrians, unless you are a fortification. This does not affect your army faction. Fine. So, what that means is you cannot play the rather maligned Imperial Soup, where you take a Custodian unit, a Gilliman, a Guard Block, uh, an Assassin, etc, etc. You have to find another keyword to tie your stuff together. Same with Chaos. You can't just have, oh, here's some Demons of Corn and some Marines of Slanesh and some Cultists of Zinch and, oh, I don't know, uh, a, a Nurgle Knight. You can't really do that. You need to find another keyword. Usually this will mean God-aligned forces, uh, which are more thematic. It has got some thematic implications, but it was a needed change. And I think the fact that it's not been changed again makes me think that people have accepted it and are, for the most part, happy with this change. Um, but that's not the only thing. We also note that psychic focus and character targeting, which are interested in the previous FAQ, I'll just put them on the screen here, I won't read them out. Uh, they continue to apply, which is good. That obviously means that they're happy with those changes. The community is happy with those changes. And so we move on. However, there was one rule from that uh, spring FAQ that has been changed again. Uh, following feedback, they're changing the beta match play rule for tactical reserves, which was itself an update to the original rules as well. The original wording restricted the number of units that could arrive during a game to half your army, but this was changed to be half power level and then changed again to be half points. Um, but what that didn't do is prevent Alpha Strike shenanigans. Alpha Strike um, is the name for a mechanic where you leave a huge amount of your power sat in reserve and then drop it on turn one right in your opponent's face and you just crush them before they can do anything to stop you because you just arrived. It's not like in older editions where you rolled for reserves, where you had scatter dice. Those things aren't a thing anymore. You just appear. And so this mechanic was, ex well, this um, tactic was exceptionally powerful and they tried to limit it. However, it didn't quite work. Uh, they limited the units that arrived as reinforcements during the first battle rounds being set up within their own deployment zone. It was one of the biggest changes. And many reserve heavy armies, as they say in this article or in this post, continued to be very, very powerful. It didn't work. Um, you also should note that armies like Gene Steeler Cults were not actually restricted by this rule. They were exempt 
um, which they're not anymore. That will be addressed in the GC Le Colt Codex. They made a point of that. So when cults come along, they'll get their own way around this, I suspect, or their own interaction with it. So what they've also mentioned is that the narrative doesn't make sense. So, sure, I had to put my reserves in my own deployment zone. That's cute. Why? Why am I being forced to do this? What thematic narrative reason do I have for doing this where I have to put my death company assault squad in my own deployment zone and not just throw them at the enemy? Why? This is silly. And it also didn't stop turn two dropping giant pile of reserves. It, it, it wasn't fully there. So they have changed it again. They've not enshrined it into final form because it's such a big change. Well, quite a big change. But... It's going to go back into beta, and in the spring 2019 update, I suspect, we'll get the final form, assuming they're happy with it. So, how it reads now is that in matched play games, uh, at least half the total number of your units in your army must be set up, and the combined points value of all the units you set up on the battlefield must be at least half of your army's total points value, even if every unit could be allowed to be set up elsewhere. That means that half your units and half your points have to be on the board. I believe that hasn't changed, um, apart from power to points, from the previous update. So, fine. And I did say at the time when I talked about this rule that I thought it was too restrictive, uh, but I didn't know how they could change it, because if you take away the half points thing, well, people will just take lots of little cheap units to fill up the half unit cap. If you say half units is taken away, then people just... Um, take one big unit that takes up like most of their points, drop that down, and then keep all their powerful stuff in reserve. I, I did have some critique of it, but they have changed it again. So what they've said is that in match play games, units that are not placed on the battlefield during deployment in order to arrive mid-game cannot arrive during the first battle round. Also, if you're not on by the end of the third round, you are counted as destroyed. So that means you now have a two-turn window in which to drop your units onto the battlefield. Which is interesting. Because if you're an old old school player, actually it is old school now, if you're an old school player, you come from the days where first turn reserves was not a thing anyway, unless you were a very specific gimmick, like the Deathwing, the Grey Knights, maybe some other guys had it, but it was a very rare thing. Reserves, as a rule of thumb, could not arrive on turn one. They had to roll to arrive on turn two, and three, and four, and then they came in automatically on five, or whatever the exact wording was that um, it was for, that was how fifth edition had it. I can't remember exactly how sixth and seventh did it. But first turn reserves was not a thing. So this is a regression to an old rule, but at the time, I don't remember anybody complaining about this change. The Alpha Strike was still a thing you could do, but you did it on turn two with a giant pile of reserves, or you played Deathwing or Grey Knights. Things like the Farsight Bomb, the infamous, to some, Farsight Bomb, where you dropped in a huge power of the battle suits on turn two. This is a tactic that I used quite liberally in 7th edition, but I did it on turn two. And while it was impactful, because Tau were powerful in 7th edition, it wasn't game-breaking. And so I'm curious to see how this rule will be taken. I think it makes more narrative sense than the must land in your own deployment zone if you come in on turn 1, in that, well, your units are naturally held back because they're being held back. They're not to arrive as the first engagement is fired, as the first engagement is joined and the first shots are fired. They're there to arrive part way through. It gives your opponent as well, in terms of the game aspect, time to set up, time to predict, time to counter. It means that you can actually think about using your reserves rather than, right, I'm going to do as much as I can to fill up this limit without breaking the rules. Okay, giant pile of dudes in your face, GG, well played, lol. You, you can't do that anymore. You can still do something like that, but turn two, your opponent's had a movement phase, at least one movement phase. And that means that they're going to be able to spread out, block more of the board up, and make it harder for your reserves to hit the critical things. Now, hidden away in here, they've also made some changes to fly. I don't think it's mentioned in this particular document. There's been an errata to fly, um, which may have, it may have been earlier, but it's the first time I've sort of become aware of it, where 
you can't get um, downward charges of zero inches anymore, uh, and you can't charge over things anymore. So that fly change of you can't charge over units anymore means that the whole screen something and then hop or screen something to block a charge, but oh well, I have fly you jump. You can't do that anymore. So that's a double limiter to the melee alpha strike. The ranged alpha strike, where you just drop in a lot of shooting units right where you need them on turn two, is still going to be powerful. But I wonder if this will be enough for people to say, you know what, maybe alpha strike isn't the most powerful thing going, and let's try something else. So I just hope this leads to some experimentation. I don't know if it's powerful enough as a change to really impact the meta, but I hope it does. And I do see the intention behind it. As I said at the top of the article, it's well-intentioned. We'll have to see about the execution. Uh, this also caused some interactions um, with Space Marines. So Alpha Legion, Raven Guard, Stygius 8, uh, Eldari Rangers, and the Yin Khan have been tweaked ever so slightly. Uh, but you'll know those if you're in your army. If they are your army, you'll know about this. Um, so I'll let you work that one out on your own time. I'm not going to really talk about it too much. Now, new stuff. New stuff. Two of them, in fact. So, in response to the power of turn one, they have introduced... <coughs> excuse me. They have introduced a new stratagem to the game. This is called Prepared Positions. Cost two command points to do, and you use it at the start of the first battle round until the first turn begins. Until the end of the first turn, i.e. the first player's first turn, not the end of the first round, so keep that in mind. All units from your army that are wholly within your deployment zone, other than Titanics, receive the benefit of cover even whilst they are not entirely on or in a terrain feature. If you're already getting cover, you get nothing extra. So what that means is you have a smidge, just a smidge, more defense on the first turn. Is this going to be enough? No, probably not. Because there are some armies that just say, oh, you have cover. Lol, no, you don't. Imperial Fists, Iron Warriors, well set up tower with a lot of marker lights can just say, oh, right, cover. Um, no, that's not a thing. Bye. And so this doesn't matter anymore. So I'm wondering how much of an effect this is going to have because the cover benefit is kind of retracted a little. How do I put this? If Alpha Strike on turn one was still a thing, this would be more powerful than what it actually is because it only affects the first turn, meaning that you can't really use it later to get a defense against an incoming Alpha or Beta Strike. You can't do it. You have to use it on turn one to get that defense on turn one. And many armies aren't in range on turn one. Those armies that are will often have some way of getting around cover shenanigans because they're used to taking out the key units that you've already got in cover, which are receiving no additional benefit. So whether that's through stratagems, through traits, through powers or other passive abilities, I don't know how powerful prepared positions is going to be. I think it will help, but I don't think it's going to do loads. And in combination with the nerf to uh, tactical reserves, I think it's actually gotten even weaker than it would have been. Had this been introduced in the spring update, it would have been interesting because units would still be arriving on the first turn, but you've got cover against it. I don't know. I think it's a good change. It's well-intentioned. I still think it's a good idea, but I don't know how impactful it's going to be, and we will have to see. Uh, because... At 2 CP, it's a little bit of an investment. I'll get to command points in a second with this second introduction. At 1 CP, you just always use it. It's like, why wouldn't I just get cover on the first turn unless my opponent's army literally is not going to be in range? But at 2 CP, it starts to become a calculated risk. Is it worth using? Because, well, that's 2 CP I'm not going to get back. I'll get to that. Uh, in fact, in fact, I'll get to that now. So... The second change, tactical restraint, a new rule that limits command point regeneration. There are several warlord traits for and abilities that give you a chance to gain or refund command points when you or your opponent either use a stratagem or spend command points to do so. 
In match play games, each player can now only gain or have refunded a total of one command point per battle round as a result of such rules, regardless of their source, unless it's the moment shackle, the sevenfold chant, or the player of the twilight to get up to two. So what makes this really interesting is because there is a mechanic or a exploit known as CP farming, where you take a very cheap detachment and the uh, Astro Militarum are probably the greatest offenders here of, right, I have Kurov's Aquila, I have X, Y, and Z. Here is a giant pile of command points at the start of the game and the ability to generate a massive amount of them in, in spares. So here's like nine command points for my battalion detachment. Now I'm going to give you another three every turn. I don't know if it was quite that absurd, but it could be pretty absurd if they felt they had to go out of their way to nerf CP farming. And I know the Militarum are the strongest defenders because they're the ones who are probably the most talked about online, but there will be other armies who can do it as well. There are some players uh, or some units, some characters, some traits that just say, ah, oh, right, more command points for days. Not anymore. Which means that there's no point stacking these farming abilities. You now only need to take one regenerator of command points. You can take a second for redundancy sake in case that one happens to get sniped, but it is still worth noting that you now can actually free up your points to experiment, to add in more powerful units, to add in more powerful upgrades, to take different relics that maybe aren't command point generators and are actual powerhouse beat sticks or other buffers. You have more points available to you now if you're not taking the farming abilities. However, this doesn't solve the whole problem and someone pointed this out to me and I hadn't really considered quite how powerful it was. The guard detachments gimmick of ally in generate infinite cp also comes from the fact that you're putting in a very very cheap battalion which is something like nine cp i think it's nine um so that means that armies can still start off with a lot and i mean a lot of command points and they'll be able to chuck out stratagems a lot more quickly depending on their build but what this stratagem does or this rule i should say does is that it stops them going infinite with it. So again, it's a well-intentioned change. I think it's a good change. And I hope that it has an impact and allows people to experiment with things that aren't just CP farming because CP farming is dead. Uh, they've also then gone on to change a few stratagems. Uh, they've made them a little bit more expensive uh, as a rule of thumb, or they've changed them in some other way. Uh, so warp surge, has now gone to a maximum of four plus for your invulnerable save. Um, Upon Wings of Fire, which I think is part of the Captain Smash Hammer strategy, that's been nerfed. A bunch of Imperial Knight stratagems have been nerfed, as has Agents of Vect, which has also been errated in some way um, as well. If you know the armies, then you'll know what that means. I'm afraid I don't own those codices, so I'm in no position to comment. And that, that is the big FAQ number two, for 2018. An interesting set of changes. I'm glad to see the soup nerf sticking around. I'm glad to see the old changes sticking around. But I am curious to see how impactful this set of changes will be. Because the new tactical reserves is basically old tactical reserves, but still better because you never have to roll for your reserves and they don't scatter. Keeping them off the battlefield on turn one has a bit of narrative sense over its previous iteration and it should also help to allow armies to counter them in their movement phase by being able to spread out take the board and start to gain objective points before their opponent's army arrive particularly if they are going first on turn two as for command points i think that's again a well-intentioned change and i don't think they're going to be able to stop command point powerhouse armies unless they completely threw out the command point system and adopted a new one for example, look at Age of Sigmar's system, where you slowly gain command points and you don't get that many throughout the game, but you can get a few at the start of the game through your um, battalions. Obviously, that would require throwing out stratagems, that would require uh, introducing the concept of command abilities. It would never work to introduce that system to 40k, but I don't think they're going to be able to fix the current system's 
power without throwing it out. I don't see a way in which the very, very powerful command points and stratagems are reduced sufficiently. Command point regeneration is a good thing to target, but because of the amount of commands you can get off very, very cheap detachments, if you've got the right army, I don't know how far they can go. As for prepared positions, I think it would be more interesting in the previous update uh, because of the change to Alpha Strike, but I think it's a good idea and I think it will see some niche use, even if it isn't used by everybody because not every army is going to need it. But that's just what I think and, well, my opinion's not that important. I'm just some person reporting the news. Let me know what you think in the comments below with your thoughts on the con on the uh, changes. Sorry, I'm getting run over my words now. But more important than letting me know, of course, let me know. I'm very interested to see what you have to say. People who play the game a bit more than I do and can have a bit more of a discussion with me about it. The one person, person you need to tell is GW. GW is listening now. They have these FAQ emails where you can email them your thoughts. Go test these new rules break these new rules, push them to their limits, and let GW know what you found. If you are a tournament organizer, you're probably doing this already. If you're a tournament player or someone who goes to tournaments semi-regularly, start giving feedback if you haven't done it already, because this allows them to see what people actually think from people who are actually at the events and then make changes appropriately. Otherwise, it's just the people who are shrieking the loudest online are probably the ones who are going to get the changes pushed through because they're the loud and they're also the majority. You need to get your voice heard and to do that you need to be giving your opinion and not make them go looking for it because they won't find it. So there you go, that has been my thoughts on the big FAQ 2 for 2018. The next big rules change will be chapter approved, though I believe that will only be points. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I think it will be an interesting meta going forward. And with the Orcs and the Gene Stealer Cult, probably not that far away. I mean, it is October now. And while I would probably do the October stuff next week if it weren't for an Elf Adventure, well, I'll get round to October when I get round to October. But thank you very much for watching. And I do hope you enjoyed the video. This has been Tactica Imperialis. And I'll see you all again. Bye for now.